Hello everybody, it is Matter Wellens. Today, we're going to be a writer, a husband, and a father. So in the novelist, we basically have a family of three who you can kind of see walking around in the background here. A dad, a mom, and a son. They're on a vacation in a resort house of sorts for the next three months, but it becomes apparent quickly that each person has their own sets of wishes and wants as for what they want to get out of this vacation. And basically, our objective is to try to make everyone happy, get everyone to compromise with each other so that the family doesn't fall apart. And we actually play the role of a house spirit that can influence the father's thoughts and actions. So I think without further ado, let's begin. We're gonna play on stealth, it's not a huge game changer or anything, but on stealth, if you get spotted by the family as a spirit, then our chances of helping them out are lowered, so it adds a little bit of a gameplay element to it. And the tutorial does a better job at explaining the game than I can, so we're gonna play through that anyway. The Novelist This is it. Wow, look at this place. Still can't believe the deal we got. Where's my room? Right up there, buddy. All right, so we're a spirit. We basically travel by the light fixtures, but we can also walk around like this. Look at the letter on the dining room table and read it. All right. Mr. Kaplan, welcome to your home for the summer. We're very excited to have you. This is one of our most popular properties, and I'm sure you and your family will have a memorable visit. We have you booked through August 31st. Your security deposit has cleared, and our cleaning service freshened everything up on Saturday. You can buy groceries at McLennan's in town, and if you'd like to eat dinner out, there are quite a few restaurants on Meridian Avenue, just off Fairview. If you have any questions, or if you run into any trouble at all, please don't hesitate to call. Pete Fuller, Hanager Rentals. All right. So that gives a little bit of background information on our family here, but right now we're just gonna focus on the tutorial. The Kaplans can't see you while you're possessing a light fixture, so possession is the safest way to explore. You can travel like this. Use possession to reach the office upstairs, so I believe this is the office. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Your goal in each chapter is to figure out the dilemma facing Dan, the dad, and decide how he should resolve the situation. Each member of the family desires a different outcome and it's up to you to decide which path to take. If you remain undetected and learn the desires of more than one character, you can uncover compromises that will help the family. So each time we get to act, it's actually seven days apart, I believe. Every time we decide on something, it does it for the whole week. All right, writer's block. So, let's return to the office upstairs and see what clue we can get. The office, I believe, is over here. Okay, no one's here right now. So we can read Dan's journal. Writer's block. I can't believe I just wrote that. Writer's block. There, again. Those two words are apparently the only damn thing I can write. I don't think it's been this bad since high school. Mr. Holder's class, an essay about Faulkner. Dan Kaplan, little-known author of Tramer's Way and Windsong, has run out of steam. Closed my eyes last night and saw a literary register article about myself. That was the first line. Paul wants three chapters next week, and so far I've got 2,000 words so sloppy I can barely read them. I cannot blow my schedule. Paul said Grofield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Why did this happen as soon as we got here? This was supposed to simplify things, but so far it's been nothing but staring at a blank page. <sighs> Maybe a walk will help, or a long drive, or a drink. 
So as you can see here, although we're on a vacation, Dan seems very troubled. Each character has a number of writings or drawings to discover. You've discovered one of Dan's. Now that you know what's troubling him, you should search the house for him to discover more about his dilemma. Alright. So here's Dan. We can read his thoughts. If this doesn't work. Yeah, he seems fairly stressed out. The cloud around Dan's head indicates that he's remembering specific moments from the past. You have the ability to explore his memories to learn more about the current chapter. Approach Dan from behind and press space to enter his memory. We're gonna do just that. And basically now we have to follow the sounds that we hear to find the moments on his mind. So there's one right here. Do you think coming here will help? It has to. Very stressed out family, Dan's trying to write and bring home the bacon, but he's having a writer's block right now, and hopefully this vacation home with a nice view towards the forests and everything will give him some inspiration. Now where is that last piece of memory? Oh, right there. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. It got me thinking. Did we swing the pendulum too far just to get him away from those bullies? Kids can bounce back quick sometimes. What if this is the worst thing we could have done? Then he asked how Daddy's book was going, and without even thinking, I said, Great, my man. Felt awful right away. It's a white lie, sure, but why not be honest? When he was younger, he was just a bundle of physical needs, but now he's like a mental, emotional sponge. He's around Linda and me all the time, and I can see him changing every day in a thousand small ways. That scares the hell out of me. What am I teaching him with a white lie? So Tommy is the name of our son. It seems like they might have taken Tommy out of school or something because of bullying. Like I said earlier, lots of issues, little deep hidden issues troubling this family. Now that we found all of Dan's memories, we can get out of here because it won't provide anything else. Now what should we do next? We should go- Dan, we're back- Hey, honey. Hmm? Oh. Okay, I think the, the audio messed up a little bit there, but our wife, Linda, and Tommy are back. So, basically right now we're just gonna try to explore the house and look into their memories to see what th what's on their mind. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, I hope this reaches you before you leave for the summer. I know we went over this in my office, but I think Tommy is a wonderful child, and I'll feel better putting my recommendation in writing. Children develop at different speeds, and Tommy shows no signs of a serious learning disorder, so the most important thing is to be patient and supportive. Make sure he's done his reading exercises each day in a calm, loving environment. Make sure not to show disappointment when he struggles, which he will at first. Show encouragement when he succeeds, as self-confidence is critical at this age. If he fails to make progress with the exercises I've included, you may want to take him to the local pediatrician for further recommendations. I hope this is of help. I look forward to seeing Tommy this September. So, seems like Tommy's bullying might be because he has some sort of learning disabilities. A very mild one, it seems like, but one nonetheless. You can always press tab to see your progress. All right. Thank you. So we have another notebook here. Ideas. Alice listens in on a phone call. Problem. Ruins sympathy for Alice. Solvable? Probably not. Too cheap and easy. Seen at the lake? Alice sees him there? Could definitely work. Comeuppance for Scott. Alice stays innocent. Sarah sees who Scott really is. Yeah, I think that works. So that sounds like some ideas that Dan has been writing down for his book. Oh, we can help Dan out, but we haven't explored enough of the house for my liking yet, so we're gonna keep looking around. And we should be careful about Dan turning around and seeing us, so we're gonna travel like this again. Is the sun here? No, he isn't. But, there are some clues. Hmm. Tommy knows that his dad is pretty stressed out lately. Rudder's block. Dan read his thoughts for the final clue. 
Oh, so this is just the goals. All right, we don't need this for now. So we gotta read his thoughts when he comes by. Let's see. Where's my notebook? I know I had something good. So basically we can solve the problem for Dan if we find his notebook and just end the chapter there. But like I said, we haven't explored anything yet. But I do believe that the notebook he's talking about is the one that's right here. Nope. The one in, the, in his office probably. Yeah, this one. But we're not going to choose that one just yet. Let's see. Who can we find down here? Did we read this yet? So, Dan is a writer, so you would have to assume that the person who wrote this is the wife Linda, and she seems to be an artist, of sorts. Don't turn around. Don't turn around, buddy. Oh! Paul, good to hear from you. Listen, things are taking a little longer than expected. I feel good about this one, but I haven't quite brought some of the threads together. It's just an execution hiccup, not a lack of ideas. This is the most complicated book I've ever tried to write, and let's just say I have a newfound respect for guys like Dickens and Joyce who can juggle ten threads at once without getting lost. I'm figuring some of this stuff out the hard way, I guess you could say. Anyway, the outline I sent you is still good, those are still the beats, those are still the themes I plan to explore. I'll keep you posted, Dan. So as a professional writer, he has deadlines to keep. Oh Wait, shit! What? I have been spotted! That is not good. Alright. So that was a pretty bad start, actually. Now that we've been seen by Dan, it might mean that we can't choose his compromise later. Dan has stopped looking for you, but now he's become suspicious. If he spots you again, he'll become spooked, and you won't be able to find a compromise with him in this chapter. So, Dan is suspicious, not spooked yet. We're okay for now. Let's see what little Tommy is thinking. Wish I could help daddy. Yeah, kids... Kids know a lot more than what people think they do. They don't let on, but... Daddy said he'd be my buddy here. So although he's worried about dad, he's really <laughs> hoping that they can get some time to play together too. And where is the wife? Right there. So wrapped up in his hey, book. Honey. how's it going? No distractions here, just us. Alright. We must be missing quite a few clues, though. <laughs> Anything in the kitchen? Doesn't seem like it. Maybe more upstairs? Let's see. Yeah, we haven't found Linda and Tommy's clues yet. Not enough of them, anyway. Found that. Oh, there's Dan. Let's see. Oh, there's a note here. Barb, how are things? Is school still taking up all of your time or is anything new going on? We've been up here for a week or so and I can already tell it's going to be great for painting. There are hardly any distractions and this house has a room they called the conservatory in the brochure which really just means it has a lot of windows. Whatever they call it, it's a great space for working. The second floor blocks most of the northern light but I'll manage. I took Tommy down to the beach today, and you should have seen how excited he was. I wish I'd brought my camera. He kept looking back up at the house like he couldn't believe it was so small from down there. He seems to have taken to this place really well so far, which is such a load off our minds. We didn't know what to expect, but so far, so good. Anyway, let me know how things are going. Yours, Linda. Seems like the wife is pretty optimistic about this, and I was right. She is a painter. But everyone has their worries, and we haven't seen what her worries are yet. So we should keep looking. Not much in the bathroom, it seems like. Is anyone coming? Really don't want to be spotted again. Oh, there's a room down there that we haven't gone into yet. There we go. Hmm. Tommy drawing him and his dad playing board games. It's interesting to note that I think, um, Tommy's only been drawing his dad so far, so he really looks up to him. It's such a crazy thought, the three of us all alone in this house all summer. 
I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe it has a raccoon problem or a toilet that backs up. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, and I'm painting again. I got set up today. I felt a buzz right away. So much time to work. I haven't had a space like this in forever, probably since I left the studio. I went straight into a new piece today, got lost, looked up to see it was two hours later. I think this new one has promise, though I still have some rust to shake off. Speaking of which, I'm going to go check on Dan and see if his new office is doing anything for him. He's pretty frustrated, but he has to figure something out soon, or this place won't be any different than home. Hmm, <laughs> yeah, this house has a spirit problem. Not exactly a raccoon problem. That's looking nice and optimistic. Someone coming? Oh, that was a close one. We can go into our memories. Let's see here. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces for Tommy. If he knows there's something wrong, he's not showing it. We told him this is just a fun family vacation, and he seems to like it here so far. But this might be it for Dan and me. Neither one of us has said the word yet, but I know it's right there under the surface. We've been dancing around it. I can't even bring myself to write the word here. Writing it would be almost as bad as saying it, because once it's there, it becomes real. A thing we have to deal with. I'm not ready for that yet. We agreed to make this a fresh start. I meant it. I think he did too. Now we just have to treat each day like a new beginning. Now we see what Linda's problems are. Seems like there's some rockiness in their marriage. I promise. Me too. Me too. That's pretty vague, but I'm guessing they're promising that they'll work on their marriage together in this house. Oh, okay, so what do we see now? We have a family here with the dad as a writer, and he's pretty writer's blocked right now. Frustrated with that. Wife is frustrated with their relationship, and the kid just wants their parents to pay attention to him. And he might also have some sort of developmental disorders too, so lots of little things going on here. We can get out now. Let's see. We could have a bottle of wine and hang out like we used to. So if we want to choose Linda's decision for this chapter, we're gonna to have to find that bottle of wine. Oh, Tommy. Great job, I just wanted to see you. Let's enter Tommy's thoughts. Where is our ringing coming from? Oh! Are there any other kids? We'll have to find out. Hmm, yeah. It's a nice house here. It's huge, by the way. But he's really isolated and has no friends, really. Although I'm not sure if he would have too many friends at school either, because it seemed like he was being bullied. I'm just gonna take a quick look around the house in general. He really loves his dad. You should probably draw some of your mom too, man. She's gonna get jealous. Alright, so I think that's it. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's get away. Me and Daddy can play it Racing Roger. Like... So. Now that we have all three little blue thingies, we can choose a resolution for the chapter now. Oh, you know what vacation? A vacation is supposed to be for fun and relaxing, right? And I think among, between the two of them, the mom and the dad, their kids should be the most important. So I'm hoping I can play with Tommy today and, you know, the wife won't be too mad about it. So let's go find Racing Rogers. I think that is a board game. Nope. Tommy's room is over here. By the way, one thing that I forgot to show off, I'm not sure if I just accidentally clicked out of something earlier, but I can make the light flicker so that it, so that 
a character stays on it and they don't go into an area that I don't want them to go into. So let's choose Racing Roger this time. Selecting Racing Roger will choose Tommy's resolution for this chapter. Dan and Linda will be disappointed. However, if you discover Dan or Linda's desired outcome and haven't spooked them, you will be able to find a compromise with one of them in the next chapter. Press escape- oh, nope, don't need to read that. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with this. The Kaplans are asleep. Explore the house for clues about its past, then whisper your decision to Dan. How much around here? Hmm. By playing carefully and learning of the desires of more than one character, you've earned the ability to find a compromise with any character you didn't spook in the previous chapter. You can only select one character for a compromise. So I think we can select everybody. Right. We can compromise. Oh, let's read this first. From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 15th, 1948. Mr. Laurie finally gave in and agreed to let me inspect the house. I believe he simply grew tired of hearing me ask. Although I think deep inside, he knows I'm correct. A property like this simply doesn't change hands every year or two without a reason. I noticed a pattern when I was cleaning out old files and this house kept coming up. It's changed owners seven times in the past 13 years. I began digging and not a single one of the sales was financially motivated. People just seemed to keep deciding that they'd rather live somewhere else. Which doesn't add up in my mind. The view is striking, the isolation and privacy alone make it a great property. The remoteness can't be an issue, certainly no one who can afford this kind of home needs to work for money. It's a mystery, but that's why I'm here. A little bit into the history of this house, well, we can probably guess why. This house hasn't been doing great on the retail market. Realty market. So. We've already chosen Tommy's outcome. And all we have to do is go whisper to Dan. Except if we want to find a compromise, then we have to find one of the items of the other characters and select that instead. Hmm. So should I go with the wife? Or the dad? Um, the notebook. Where is that notebook? The notebook of ideas. Yeah, where is his notebook? It was here earlier. Hmm. Oh! From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 16th. Standing in the kitchen, drinking coffee and admiring the view. I simply don't understand it. Who wouldn't want to see this every morning? That appears to be the great question of 451 Timberline Road. I slept very well last night. It's a good thing the previous owners left the house furnished. It was just about as quiet as anywhere I'd ever been. The only sounds today are the ocean and a few birds. After I finish breakfast, I plan to begin my inspection. Later? I was inspecting the upstairs walkway to make sure the railing was sturdy, when I saw something odd upstairs. Downstairs. I'm not certain I can describe what it was, and I've already talked myself halfway out of thinking it was anything at all. It was probably just a trick of the light coming through these big windows. Hmm. Oh, that's Dan's notebook. So the wife wanted a bottle of wine. I think for the first day, we should relax. Since he's having a writer's block right now anyway, maybe, you know, he should just take it easy for now for the first day and, you know, there's the wine. So if we do this, basically we're gonna focus on Tommy for the next week with minor focus on Linda, but we're not gonna focus on our book or writing at all. That's fine, we'll see what happens. Okay, I selected it, but that means I gotta still whisper my decision to Dan, I think. I was sitting there, waiting for something to happen. Alright. Dan! Play with Tommy! Dan! 
Dan couldn't stop thinking about how important it was to start the summer off on a good foot with Tommy, who was ecstatic when Dan knocked off early and set up a game of racing Roger on the coffee table. They laughed and played for two hours, and Dad made sure to let Tommy win most of the time. It was a happy start to Tommy's summer. The next night, Linda decided to have the bottle of wine herself after giving up hope that Dan would take a night off for them to catch up. She was a glass and half into the bottle when he surprised her by coming down to help her finish it, and though they didn't get a whole night together, it was better than another evening apart. Dan couldn't get past his writer's block. He laid awake for three nights trying to think of a way out of his jam, but he couldn't come up with one. He had to stay on schedule, so he forced himself to write a scene just to keep moving. He hated each word as he typed it, but he had no choice. 